Alright, this entire video is basically one gigantic penis pun after another, which means that YouTube is saying no to monetization, but I'm saying yes to my very first sponsored video, and that is my own clothing company, First Step Apparel, home of the very unique and very and perfectly worded Big Mara boxing shirt. You can find this and oh so many others in the link in the description down below. There is shipping to the United States, and there is shipping to Europe, so don't be surprised when Big Mara is in your face. Hello everyone, and welcome to the House of Epo. Chapter 1334 has thrust its way onto the scene. See, we're already starting right now, it's just, it's inevitable. With the title entrance ceremony. For those of you that do not remember what happened in 1333, Ippo and Miata finally got to have their conversation, uh, with Miata noticing that Ippo is gaining a lot more boxing knowledge about the ring. We also get to see Takamura really getting prepared uh, for the match and getting into his special pre-match outfit again. We have had the Hawk version, we've had the Panda, we've had the Regular Bear, we've had the Beetle. It goes on and on and on and on. This is just another one of, you know, Takamura's attempts to be grandiose, and it doesn't always work out the way that you expect. So we ended the chapter with Ippo about to press the buttons to make the wings pop out, and he was afraid that it wasn't going to open at all. And so we open up with the wings not, not opening. It, it's just, it's not working properly. Ippo is saying, thinking to himself, you know, I'm pressing this, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing. And he pushes just a little too hard and destroys the button. And at that exact moment, Kamogawa, Yagi, and Shinoda. Is that like Mike Shinoda? From anyway, were flung into the air by the four wings opening with a gigantic furious force. Now this is kind of like a Gundam wing opening. Pfft, very dramatic. And surprisingly, this was a massive, massive hit with the crowd. And everyone just basically started dying of laughter. In what Tari, uh, one of Takamura's siblings, says, dude, that is hilarious, that is so funny, that is great. And Kyoka says, that is great, Watari, you are a genius. <laughs> dude, I don't know what it is with Takamura's family, but they're all obsessed with penises, apparently. And Mamoru says, hmm, the tea of Takamura placed on the crotch is really cool. Because it is placed... And I don't know what George's problem is, or his obsession is with this stuff, but he does love to talk about the Mara. The design of the tea is, for all intents and purposes, a magnificent penis. And Takamura is kind of sitting there going, GG, old man, everybody laughed, you should be laughing too. And Kamagawa says, don't talk like you did it for me. And he's kind of just getting a little bit upset, like Takamura's not taking this seriously, and Takamura just kind of goes, what the heck? Laughing is good for the immune system. And Ippo kind of hears this, and he's like, hmm, hmm, that's a little, that's a little strange, that's a little weird. And Keith comes to the ring basically laughing, because before they knew it, the opposing side, the opposing corner had made it to the ringside, and everyone was holding gigantic point sticks. And Keith says... You look like you were having so much fun. I just walked right up to it. This is a nice venue, and it is so cool to be uh, surrounded by pictures of Rixie. Rick R I X I. I don't know how to pronounce these words. You know that by now. His robe has the words Kokushi Muso in gigantic letters, and when he took it off, the audience is in a gigantic uproar. He has such lean, defined muscles. His reach. Is extraordinarily long. In addition to the words no peace in Mahjong, the outfit even has a three-way tie painted on it. His entire theme is Mahjong, as we kind of have guessed by now. Um, you know, dragon, dragon is as dragon does. He's a force of nature. And Takamura says, I'm off. It's basically time to fight. And he's just as muscular, just as big as Keith. And he walks off, and Miata thinks to himself, it was a joke entrance, but you finished it. It's time to go. It's time to get started. And the bell has rang for the match to start, meaning the curtain has finally dropped on Takamura becoming the absolute mad lad that he is. Just a few things to notice. 
uh, with this chapter that I think are absolutely important. One, you know, a lot of people are starting to think this is feeling more and more like a joke fight. Um, but to me, it shows that there's going to be a different kind of levity um, after the fight. I think we're going to get some good humor throughout the match. It's going to be taken a little bit more seriously than what we think. Um, but it's really going to kind of set the tone for Epo's comeback. You know, much like Oda does for One Piece, George does end up giving us what I like to call wave arcs, where he builds, builds, builds up to a very high tension moment, and then he drops it back down so we have a little bit more of breathing room, and then he brings it all the way back up. And he does this, um, if you look back, a lot of the filler arcs that we have with, you know, Aoki, Kimura, Itagaki, even following along, and dare I say it, with the Aoki sub underlings, you know, all of it feels just a little bit lighter, and that's okay. It lets us breathe and kind of relax before something high tension and important takes place. Um, and another thing that everyone's kind of pointing out right now is the fact that with the coach's health being brought up, it's seeming more and more like George is going to put some real hard emphasis on the coach maybe not either being around or suffering another major health malfunction. If you kind of take a look at the history of Epo, we've seen hospitalizations just a few times in the past. One, the coach has been hospitalized before this moment in time. You can check out my theory video in the comments down below as to my thoughts on Komagawa's death. We've also seen Epo's mother in the hospital as well, and both of these kind of had some shifting tides for Epo when it comes to boxing. Um, when it came down to it, his mother being in the hospital forced Epo to take a step away and have his first pseudo retirement. And this was right before, I believe, the A class matches that were going on, uh, before his match with uh, Sayaki, the speed star. I can never say his name. Uh, but Epo really did take a step back and considered to be more of a hobbyist boxer at that moment in time. So hospital stays and Epo retiring seemed to kind of go hand in hand, or at least pushing him in a different direction with his boxing. So Perhaps the hospitalization of the coach, potential, could push him towards that nice, good forward mark. Um, but overall, I'm really looking forward to this fight. We've had some really good, fun buildup. We've seen that Keith is going to be a very tricky and honestly smart opponent for Takamura. And something else is Keith is in his natural weight class. Takamura is still cutting down. Now, we still have one, maybe two more weight classes before Takamura is at full strength. But he's getting to fight opponents who are almost as physically strong as he is. But they're not as they're not as tired from their cuts as he would potentially be, and that's really kind of cool to see. I'm really excited to see where this match goes from here. Let me know who you think is going to win in the comments down below. There is a break next week, so be prepared for another video from me about a different topic with Hajime no Ippo. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And for more Hajime no Ippo related content, I will see you guys later. That was a terrible sign off. Love you.